Well, I hate to say it, but we're putting Harbor Freight in the rear view here today. This is probably going to be my last Harbor Freight video. Well, at least my last Harbor Freight video from a store. The bear just got kicked out of his favorite Harbor Freight store. All right. So that's an exaggeration. I wasn't kicked out, but I was told succinctly that I was not allowed to film or take pictures or use my camera in any way in the store. Now, this is not the closest store to me. This is my favorite store in all of Las Vegas. Uh, if you guys didn't see the video I did, the bear and I about a year ago did a trip where we hit every single Harbor Freight in Vegas. There's six of them, I think. And we did it all in one day. We stopped for lunch and everything, but we had a, a good time of it. So I've seen every store in Vegas, and this is by far my favorite. Uh, it's, it's the nicest, the cleanest, uh, the, everything's displayed great, and the, the people who work at this store are my favorite. Everyone who works there is nice, they're pleasant, their face lights up when they see you, uh, you know, and the manager, and that's, that's the cherry on top, the manager there is, you know, is probably the favorite store manager I've ever seen in retail, in all of retail, and uh, I've worked in retail. I did my time. How she does that and keeps that 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 attitude, I will never understand. But you know, she's a, a better person than me, obviously. But I was just told that uh, I can't film there anymore. Which is now I know a lot of you are like, well, you're gonna get all personal, but this isn't about me. Alright? Because what I do is I bring information to you guys, to the community. This is to all of the den. What what corporate just said is the den isn't welcome to come and see what's here through through this channel. That that basically, I don't know. I'm I'm getting a I'm a little heated on this because this isn't the first kind of you know bad taste I've had in my mouth recently when uh, dealing with Harbor Freight. There's been you know I've heard some feedback on some of the views I've given by some people being a little like. Oh, it's not perfect. You know, you didn't say this. The people I deal with directly are amazing folks. Everyone that I've talked to that, that is like my contacts and stuff, they're smart, they're intelligent, they're not drinking their own Kool-Aid. And so, you know what this video is for? Eric, I'm talking to you. I don't know if you watch these videos. Some people have told me that you've seen them and that you like them. And maybe every once in a while you check them out and hopefully you're watching this one but there's something happening at the freight and it doesn't smell good and I've been hoping it was just kind of a thing that would pass uh, I heard the other day the VCG guys got kicked out of a Harbor Freight I heard the tool head got kicked out of a Harbor Freight and I was hoping I didn't hear the whole story with VCG I was hoping with them it was just them acting like clowns or something and and whatnot, but I had my suspicion that it was because they were filming. Oh my gosh, you have to. He has to chime in on every single video. Moto there, he's got a, a need for attention. Anyway, the, um, so, and then when Toolhead said he got kicked out for filming, I was thinking maybe just, you know, a, a self-conscious manager. Because there were some managers I know that got the smaller stores, they don't do the best job at keeping them looking great and stuff, so they get a little worried about it. Now, I understand, I, I've been to a lot of Harbor Freights. Every time we go someplace new, I always go to the Harbor Freight there, and I always introduce myself. You know, I don't necessarily say that I'm, you know, the bear from Dead Tools, but I ask him, like, hey, how's it going? I, I try to talk to him and get a feel for the store uh, so I can relate to you guys and gals. You, what, you know, what it's like and what stores to go to, who has the, you know, good customer service and where the, you know, the nice stores with all the new product and stuff. And, you know, in January we did a video on the parking lot sale and I told everyone, here's all the ins and outs so you can, you know, score the best scores at the parking lot sale. And of course that parking lot sale was the one where they decided to implement the new pricing structure that was all controlled by corporate. So basically everything I said at that parking lot sale was, was wrong because they had, unbeknownst to me, changed the entire rule book. 
And so I just went today and I talked to him and asked him how it's all you know handled because it used to be on Sunday anything that was left open over that was open box specifically anything that was like a corporate return you know the refurbished stuff that they put out there all that stuff the manager had a lot of leeway where you know it was just kind of like extra merch to to sell and get rid of it push through stock and stuff and they they changed all that and they they locked it down so it's all controlled by the cash register they have no say in it anymore and I gotta say that really bothered me because and I'm not one of these typical guy, typical guys who like know nothing about the business and they're saying you know well you're running your business wrong and you don't know how to run your business I was a chief operating officer for 20 years all right I've I understand the business aspect and I understand also what happens when you get guys and I always see that I could be wrong but I'm gonna roll the dice on this because it really feels there's a lot of young guys with MBAs who are trying to come in and tell Harbor Freight that they need to modernize and get with the times and this is the way new businesses run because one of the best things about Harbor Freight was that even though it's you know it's a big company and there's you know now there's stores everywhere there's over got to be like a thousand stores by now the it still felt because the managers had such control and such passion for their their jobs in each of the locations it always felt like I was going to a small small store like a, a family run kind of place it always felt a little bit you know old school and like the managers had a lot to say and that that in turn because they had that ownership because they were a stakeholder, if you will, in it, they transferred that to the customer. And now it feels like there's been a fence put up and that it's we're just cattle in and cattle out. And I I gotta say it doesn't doesn't feel right. I mean I could get that I can get that service at Home Depot. I can get that service at Lowe's. I can get ignored anywhere. Uh, that was, you know, there's a reason I drive across town rather than going to the hardware, hardware stores that are down the block from me. And at least there was a reason. And this whole thing with being told that we can't film there anymore, this is obviously a, a new corporate push coming down. I mean, it, it's transparent. There's, when you got three YouTubers in a day coming up with the, well, two days, I guess, coming up with the, we're not allowed to film here anymore. Obviously, somebody has made a ruling and pushed it downstream. And to me, that just smacks of, we don't care about the community. We don't care about the YouTube communities, all the people who watch and are involved and, and a part of this. And for those, you know, for any of you corporate guys who might be watching this, that's what this has always been about. This isn't just been like, I'm just some Harbor Freight super fan. This has been about gathering a community of like-minded folk who all, you know, share a lot of commonalities. And I gotta tell you, there's gonna be a lot of people who are gonna share my viewpoint on this. There, it's, I mean, I can get most of these tools ordered through Grizzly if I had to. It's, I, I love the new stuff that you guys are doing, I love, working with you and I love you know trying to you know tell people you know where the, what they got wrong and helping them you know see the light all these you know brand fanboys are like you know oh you gotta buy Milwaukee you gotta buy DeWalt you gotta buy Hilti or something it's you know and I've always been a proponent of getting the right tool for the job but part of that is the company that stands behind that tool and I don't know right now I'm feeling like this is one of the, it's like what I was talking about with the air compressors the other day. You can't tell the quality just by looking at it, but from the outside, but it is a data point. It is something that, that you need to mark down because you don't just take one data point when you're trying to evaluate something. You look at all of them, but the first thing on first approach, you look at the tool, like you look at those Fortress compressors, they just look put together better. That's not the end all be all, but that's the first check mark on the list. You know, because if they're going to take the time to do the welds right, they're going to take the time to make sure that the, you know, the cutouts match up with the dial gauges and everything. If they're going to take the time to do that there, there's a good chance they take the time to do the right stuff inside it as, you know, right as well. 
and inverse is true. When a company starts saying, we don't want you to see what's going on here. We don't want to reach out and be part of the community. We don't want to have a back and forth. We want to push our, our, uh, what's our message. We want to push our message and not have anybody ever say anything negative against it. That's a warning flag for me. So anyway, this is going to be my last, uh, unless somebody tells me otherwise that they've changed their policy, this is going to be my last video from a Harbor Freight. No more walkthroughs of any of the stores, no more guides to any new stores, none of that. If you're a fan of the den and you're not happy with it, don't talk to me. Email Harbor Freight, call Eric, let him know you're not happy. I'm not trying to start a riot here, I'm not trying to start a boycott, I'm not going to stop shopping at Harbor Freight yet. But this is, you know, that first data point. And I'm hoping that uh, some attitudes are going to change because right now, whoever's at the helm is not somebody who's listening to the people on the street. They're definitely not listening to the people in the stores, the people who actually interact with the customers. And that needs to change because the, the, in business, that's the first sign that scares me off of a company is when you got people at corporate telling the people in the store what's right and what's wrong when it's the people in the store that should be telling corporate hey here's what's going on here's what's happening here's where changes need to be made anyway i don't own stock in harbor freight there's no skin off my back all you guys sorry for the not most upbeat video this morning i was hoping for a fun happy hey we're at the parking lot sale i know i said it wasn't going to go but i needed to pick up something and I uh, thought I'd show you guys around and stuff. And instead, you get this. Take care, everyone. Shine on.